In this video, we're going to look at an example of an integral where we're going to apply the splitting the numerator technique. However, what's different with this example to the previous video that we did on this is that in this example, we have the numerator having a higher degree than the denominator. Now, typically this kind of example would be, would be dealt with by just doing a polynomial long division, and that's a perfectly fine way of doing it. But if you want to think of another way of doing it, I know that I personally prefer this method because I wasn't great at polynomial long division, then this is how we'd go about it. So we're looking at x cubed over x squared plus x plus 1. So the numerator has a degree 3 and the denominator has a degree 2. Now what we want to do is we want to massage our numerator, try to fiddle around with it to make it look like the denominator. We really, the aim is to force the denominator to appear in the numerator. So to do that, I can see that I have a degree 2 in the denominator, so I want a degree 2 to pop up in the numerator. I want to have an x squared term. So I'm going to factor the x cubed into x times x squared. And then the denominator stays as is. It's just x squared plus x plus 1. Now the reason for doing this is because at this point we're really now going to force the numerator to include the denominator. So that x squared, we're going to actually write it in a particular way. I'm going to put square brackets for a moment. The x squared is going to be written as x squared plus x plus 1. So now I've really just forced the numerator to include the denominator, but of course I can't do that for nothing. I need to subtract what I added. So I added x plus 1, so I need to subtract to that as well. Now you'll see that I'm putting some brackets in very particular positions and that will be apparent in a moment. So this is all over x squared plus x plus 1. Now what we're going to do is at this point that we're really going to split our numerator. But we also have to distribute this x through to both this term and this term. So that's why I put brackets around them so that we can have two separate terms to distribute our x through to. So we're firstly going to get x times x squared plus x plus 1. So that's our first uh, fraction, I suppose. And then the second one is x times x plus 1 over our denominator, x squared plus x plus 1. But now you'll see that the benefit of doing this is we can cancel that factor with that factor. And in our first, in our first fraction, we're really only just left with an x, which is much easier to, to integrate. And then we're going to actually do the exact same process for the second fraction. So if I distribute that x through, I get x squared plus x. But of course I want to force the 1 to appear. So I'm going to add a 1 and I'm going to subtract a 1 to compensate. So I haven't changed anything overall. But I'm going to put my brackets again over x squared plus x plus 1. And now we're going to once again split the numerator. So we have the integral of x. Now, splitting the numerator gives us x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. And now be very careful here because we have a minus 1 times that negative 1 there. So that's actually going to turn out to be a plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. And then again, you can see that this is going to cancel with that, and we're going to be left with just 1. So we get x minus 1 plus this fraction, 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. And so now we've turned our original integrand into something which doesn't have a fraction with a numerator greater than denominator. And we know how to integrate each of these three terms. The first two are very simple, very standard. It's x squared on 2 minus x. The second one needs a little bit of work. But what we have is we have a fraction with a constant in the numerator and an irreducible quadratic in the denominator. And when we have that, we need to complete the square. So when we complete the square here, let's say that would be x plus a half all squared plus a quarter. And now hopefully you recognize that this is going to be the standard form of the inverse tan function. And that's actually on the standard integrals um, that's given to you in an exam. 
one thing we need to be very careful of is this quarter. So a quarter is really a half squared. And so on our standard form, the half is equal to a. So just applying our standard form now, we get one over a, which is one over a half times 10 inverse of our f of x. Well, f of x here is this bit, x plus a half, divided by a, which is one on two. And then we can tidy this up just a little bit. We get x squared on two minus x, one over a half is the same as two. And then we have 10 inverse of 2x plus 1 plus a constant. And that is our final answer.